uh, kind of dissected olive oil a little bit. I figure we'll do something similar, but with something that I think a lot of people are buying and serving, particularly this time of year, which are cured hams. So whether it's prosciutto, usually that means it originates from Italy or uh, in Spain, they have a similar tradition of hams than those are like Jamon Serrano or the more, um, more kind of cult, like more expensive, more prestigious, the Hamoni Berco, um, which is also something you might not see day to day, but around the holidays, sometimes you, you will find it in, the, in specialty stores in the States. And then um, also here in the States, we have a lot of great charcuterie artisans that have sort of modeled ham, their techniques after either prosciutto or jamon. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different hams out there and it's hard and each one of them kind of has its own sort of subsect of terms and cultures since, you know, in Spain, they're Spanish speaking, in Italy, they're Italian speaking. And then here we've sort of adopted our own terms that's sort of an amalgamation of all of those. Um, so it can be kind of confusing, um, much like on the olive oil label, um, just sort of breaking down some of those terms you might see what it means in terms of how the product was made. Uh, and similarly to the olive oil, because there is a decent amount of fat in cured hams, which is intentional. If you're not someone who likes um, a more fat forward charcuterie item, um, sometimes the uh, cure, the sa salamis where it's all chopped up, some people prefer that. But um, to me, I think even if you're sensitive to it, if you get a really high quality ham and it's cut very thinly, the, the fat can be really manageable and it sort of just melts away. And it is sort of part of the product and it will differ depending on the tradition it comes from. And then also um, the breed of animal they use and then the aging technique. Uh, and then the diet of the pigs themselves actually is also super important. Um, like any food that, uh, like, a, like cheese, a lot of people don't realize this, but what the animals eat is a huge part of what you smell and taste. Uh, sort of like you are what you eat. Well, with these animals, it's it's very true. Uh, and so there are special diets sometimes associated with some of these products that help yield um, a more tender, more um, sort of uh, marbled fat effect. Uh, and again, a lot of that mo has to do with the genetics of the breed, which We'll start with uh, Jamon Serrano in Spain. And uh, this is a cured ham that again, like uh, Spain in general, I'd say a theme across wine, olive oil, and also their cured hams, at least the Jamon Serrano. Uh, you'll find a good quality to value ratio. Um, and it's made from what you'll find is Hamon Serrano is always going to be made from the hind leg. Most hams are made from the hind legs, but there are a couple other cuts we'll get into. And one of the things that distinguishes uh, the Hamon Serrano, besides having to have been made and aged in Spain, is that there are various regions to where, where it can be made. Um, and each of those subregions sort of have their own sort of profile and traditions, but that gets like very nitty gritty. But overall, it's uh, the, the product itself is made in a method that dates back to the Roman times. And um, this is usually made, if it's Haman Serrano, it's made using what we would call more modern breeds of pigs. They're still what we would consider heritage breeds, but uh, the Haman Iberco, which we'll get to in a minute, deals with a really old Iberian breed of pig that has been around since they suspect uh, the time of the caveman because there are drawings of pigs that look like the Iberico pig and it's a very distinguishable pig. So um, it, there's a lot of belief that the, the animals domesticize or, or sort of have, these animals have lived side by side by us for a long time. Um, so these are made usually from Duroc uh, if it's Hamon Serrano, which is one of those, again, more modern heritage breeds. And um, they are made 
usually um, in there's a couple essential steps. First, there's the, the way that you trim the leg, then the salting. Uh, and in both Hamon Serrano and Prosciutto de Parma, there's an initial salting and then this, um, the salt is washed off and then they're resalted a little bit before they go back in the cave. And one of the big differences with Hamon Serrano is that before it uh, undergoes salting, the skin, the outer skin is actually cut off. Um, and so it is then usually they use some lard or something to sort of protect it. But that is one of the largest differences uh, between that and prosciutto de Parma, which the skin is on. As a customer going to a deli counter, you'll never have to deal with the skin. But if you ever worked uh, in a kitchen or at a deli counter, then you'll know the difference for sure because you have to trim the fat off or the, the skin off the prosciutto, which is can be tricky, especially because you don't want to take too much of the fat off. And it's quite tough. Uh, if you think it's something that's been aged for about a year and kind of dried out, can be a little hard to maneuver. But with the Hamon Serrano, that's not the case. The leg has already had it trimmed, which means the cuts will look a little different too. So in the case of Hamon Serrano, um, mine had a little bit of a strange sort of like vein in it that it broke along. So it, they kind of fell apart, but typically, You'll see it's sort of a longer, skinnier slice. You'll see a lot of the fat glistening since it's been tempering. Whereas the prosciutto tends to be a much larger um, cut because of the way that the skin is rendered. So it's gonna be more of almost like a square cut. You can, sometimes even you can see on the edge where the skin once was, but any good deli should trim it off because it is quite coarse. Um, so that's one of the major uh, differences in terms of how it's rendered, but it ultimately affects the flavor. Um, to me, the Hamon Serrano is more savory. Uh, you'll also notice it's quite darker and that's because there isn't the skin to protect the ham. Uh, the air circulation sort of affects, affects it differently. The, the, the skin is a barrier, it's a protector. So it does mean that it tends to be a drier texture than the, the prosciutto. Prosciutto um, can be, if it, it should be thin, very sliced, thin, very slight, slight, sliced, very thin. Very thin. <laughs> there, I got it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's not always, and sometimes it can be uh, like a little, maybe even gummy, you might, say when it's cut thick, thick. When it's thinner, it's really delicate and sort of melts on the tongue. But in general, there's just gonna be more moisture uh, in the, the prosciutto because of that difference in the way they're made. And then another thing I think it affects is the flavor. Uh, to me, the Serrano is gonna be for someone who likes more intense flavors, um, more I might even say like gamey leading flavors, like you taste the more funky cured meat aspect of it. Um, you will also get a little bit of sweetness. I think they're also quite nutty. Um, and so just a little bit more savory leaning, whereas I think with the prosciutto and some of the domestics um, and then the hamoni verco as well, you get a more sweeter leaning profile. Uh, not to say that there isn't a decent amount of salt, um, but that there's sort of a, a sweetness that I associate with cured ham, if that makes sense to you guys. You know, that little bit of like, um, and that comes with that uh, tenderization of the, the fat and breaking down over time. Uh, if it's done properly, it, it converts into uh, flavors that we perceive as sweet. Um, that again also has to do with the breeds. So what a Hamon Serrano is very reasonably priced. It's what you would get if you've been to Spain and had sort of the street sandwiches that have ham and uh, like maybe a tomato, just like a fresh tomato smashed on it, like tomato jam. Um, it's kind of like the everyman's ham. It's still made according to like very, distinct traditions, but it's affordable. And 
you know, most casual restaurants utilize it. And then sort of the step up and very much the pride of, of Spain is the jamón iberco, which is made in a very similar way to the jamón serrano. But the major difference is that jamón iberco comes from the iberco pig. Uh, it's also known as the pata negra, which means it's black okay. pig. Um, it's a completely black pig uh, with um, black hooves and they're quite large with little legs, sort of like domed bodies. And uh, they're very distinctive looking. Again, that's how they could recognize those on the cave drawings. And they have a kind of a superior makeup in terms of the delicate marbling. Their muscles are mar marbled with very thin veins of of fat, which for a ham is ideal. Um, there's also a very old tradition, um, which is another designation. If you ever see a label that says Hamon Iberco de Bellota, B-E-L-L-O-T-A, that means acorn. And that means that this is a ham made from not only the Iberico pig, but Iberico pigs that are allowed to free range in what they call a dehesa, or so it means farm in Spanish. But it's not a typical farm. It's really more of like an agro forest um, where there's a lot of native plants and these pigs love acorns. And so during the acorn season, they're allowed to free roam and they predominantly eat herbs and grasses and acorns which have a lot of benefits. Uh, it produces oleic acid, which is also what you get in olive oil. It's super beneficial, high in antioxidants, tons of health benefits. And it's besides uh, the only thing that it has more oleic acid as a, like a traditional food is, in and of itself is olive oil. So this is sort of unique principle of this ham which is another reason why it's so coveted. Um, this diet sort of renders the meat even more tender. And, um, but again, it can be confusing because there's jamón iberco, which just means it's from this pig. And then in order to have the acorn diet and all these extra words, just each one you add means they'll be more expensive, um, is the, the bellota, the, the acorn diet. Um, and that's typically, those are made in areas where it's sort of like mountainous or at the base of the foothills of, of mountains. And they traditionally the hams would cure in like just huts in the open air, the mountain air. Some places still do let some natural air in through shutters, um, but that's, uh, it's more, the environments are more controlled now. But there are um, five, major regions where the jamón iberco uh, comes from. Uh, there's Salamanca, which is uh, not too far from Madrid. It's, a little, it's an old university town. Um, there's Jabugo, which is known for having maybe the most robust flavor profile of all the ibercos. Um, there's the Pedroco Valley, and then there's also extra Madura. And um, those are, there may be some other like outliers, but those are the, the, the main areas of production and the ones that have certification. And again, not all of those producers practice the, the, the acorn grazing, the, the beota. Some of them just make jamón iberco. And if it's labeled jamón, it means it's made from the hind leg. And sometimes you'll also see a paleta iberco. Paleta is a shoulder cut, it's a smaller cut. Um, and then additionally with the jamón iberco, because it's such a celebrated part of Spanish cuisine, they in Spain serve them with the bone in on a stand and they have someone hand slice the ham which I can tell you is very, very, very hard to do well. It takes a lot of practice. Um, 
And with the Hamon Iberco, and not to mention the Hamon Iberco Bayota, it's a very expensive product. So much like the tradition of the ham, the tradition of the person who cuts this ham, who's known as the Hamonera, is also part of the culture. And you sort of practice to become a master Hamonera. And then I guess if you become the master Hamonera, you like work for all the finest Iberco houses at trade shows. I don't know. That's yeah. what I've experienced. But it's like a whole subculture, which is sort of fascinating. But I recommend that you don't ever buy the bone in because in, or don't buy full pieces either. I had a friend once call me then say they just bought a leg of prosciutto at Costco and how do they cut it? And I asked them if they had a deli slicer and they said no. So <laughs> I would definitely recommend you just buy the slices you need at the store uh, unless you wanna get really creative. Um, if, if you did wanna get really creative, where would you find that in Chicago? I mean, with the exception of it popping up in Costco this one time. I mean, any store will special order it for you, but it's going to be really expensive because so a leg of Hamon Serrano, which lower price point, but still is usually around 15 to 18 pounds. So same thing with prosciutto de Parma or most Italian prosciuttos are around like 15 to 18 pounds. Um, the Ibercos are a little smaller. The Paletas are like four to six pounds, but you know, but at a hundred dollars a pound or whatever it goes for here, it's going to be a very expensive piece of meat. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, is if you can't slice it super thin, you're also sort of losing a little bit of the tradition. But I will say one hack I have for um, if you bought your ham, bring it home. And maybe it's a little thicker than you like, or you're a little sensitive about the texture of the fat. Um, a hack I actually learned in Spain from a producer of Iberico, who I got to visit on my birthday a couple years ago, which was one of the best birthdays I've ever had, um, is that if you serve it on a warm plate, like not super warm, like 75 degrees or mm -hmm. so, um, or what I like to do is put it on a piece of warm bread or toast because the heat will like melt the fat a bit. So it'll make it sort of soften just like, but like butter, if you put butter on bread, it's a similar idea. People don't think about it, but the, the heat, you don't want to overdo it because you don't want to cook it since it is a cured product, but um, that kind of softens it. It's also just a really delicious way to eat it. Um, and like in Italy, which we're going to hop over to now with prosciutto, um, they have a product called lardo, which is pretty much just the fatty ends of the prosciutto. And they slice that thinly on warm bread and serve it as a dish, like mm -hmm. inside of butter. And it's delicious. Yum. And then I'm going to agree with Chris. She actually put in the chat she, that she's pretty sure that Fresh Farms is a grocery that you would be able to order it from if you wanted to. I would, I would yeah, really think one. that Fresh Farms would be um, just due to, uh, their, their clientele and stuff, there's definitely a huge European, um, yeah, shopping there. so it'd be a definite place that would, you know, have those purveyors and be able to order it in. But um, I also think too, this is another thing where, um, you know, the flexibility of our small businesses. Um, like if you call a shop, I know the woman who's the buyer and owner of All Together Now, same thing with Beautiful Rind. I'm sure if you called them and said you wanted to order a leg of prosciutto or hamon or whatever, mm -hmm. um, they get those orders in weekly almost. So as long as, you know, they know you know what you're in for, how much it is and everything, you know, a lot of them I'm sure would be happy. They're already ordering it anyways. Yeah, yeah, the small cheese purveyors definitely are. are Anyone really who already great. sells those sorts of products, there's a shop, a place up by me called, it's near Jeans called L&M. And that's actually uh -huh. where I got the meats that I'm using today. Um, so I'm sure all those guys, they're ordering regularly from, and L&M actually did tell me that they are, gonna get in some hamon iberco so if you want to just go get some slices they are ordering it but i would call because they don't have it yet but they were planning on getting it in the next week or so so mm, um, great tip if you want wanted to give it a try treat yourself a little bit 
Uh, and even though the price per pound is quite high with these hams, if they're cut thin, you really don't need too much. Like, you know, I'd say five or six thin slices is usually about a quarter, a quarter, between a quarter and a third a pound, but usually a quarter. So, you know, even you could just get a couple slices if you wanted to try it. You don't have to like buy a ton. Um, but next we have prosciutto, um, of which there are many varieties, but uh, I think the one that has the most name recognition and also is the most beloved and consumed throughout the world is the prosciutto di Parma. And if you remember from last week, if you were here, we talked about PDO products. Uh, prosciutto di Parma is, is also a PDO product, which means that it's a product of protected uh, origin or designation. And these are traditional products where there's actually laws and, and sort of boards that govern and, and um, make sure that these products are made within a particular region uh, using traditional methods and other things that are, are designated in the PDO itself. And there is a consortio of the Prosciutto de Parma and they, um, they are responsible for sort of making sure that everything um, is up to snuff. And much like a Parmigiano Reggiano, which is made in the same region, the Emilio Romagna region, uh, which Parma is a, a, a province in, uh, they will inspect every ham before it gets what they call the Consorcio brand. In this case, the Parma brand is a crown. You've probably seen it. It says Parma and then there's like, it almost looks like a cartoon crown that circles it. And that should be branded on the leg of a ham if it is actually prosciutto to Parma. There are imposters. And if you ever think someone has an imposter leg, you just look for that brand and if it has it, it, it's good to go. And it's also means that the ham has been tested by a uh, sensory expert and it, it reaches a certain quality marker and then they brand it. In, if it didn't meet that quality marker after it's aging, they would not brand it and it could not be sold as prosciutto de Parma. It just be sold as like generic prosciutto. Something less, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true of most PDO products. Same thing with Parmigiano Reggiano. If it doesn't meet a certain standard, it's the name that's emblazoned on the rind is like shaved off and it's demarcated and it's like shredded and sold to, to local places like kit, disassociated it. So they wanna make sure that they are all of a certain quality, but that doesn't mean that there isn't variation within the producers and in terms of their scale and and methodology, even though they all do meet certain standards, which is that the, the pigs are raised in a certain part of Emilio Romagna around the, the, the Parma area, and that the pigs are the large white breed that is indigenous to the area. Uh, it can also, the PDO also allows for Duroc, uh, which is again, one of those modern breeds. Um, but also still a really high quality heritage breed. Um, and it has to undergo a, a minimum of 400 days of aging. And uh, they start aging sort of because of the way it's made, uh, it's sort of, the, it undergoes the first process, it's aged for about three months and then it undergoes a, a secondary process. So first it's, much like the jamon serrano, it's salted. And then um, the salt is applied by hand to the ham after it's been trimmed. The, again, this is the hind leg only that they use for prosciutto de Parma. And uh, it, it's, it's hand salted. So you see it on the outside and then it rests for several days to let the salt absorb and then it's washed. And now it goes into its initial curing, whereas Hamon Serrano would undergo another salting at this point, but Prosciutto de Parma doesn't. It goes in a chamber that is preferably like this one, 
can see these are a bunch of hams. This is a producer of a uh, prosciutto department called Pio Tosini in Langarino, which is in the Po River Valley, which is uh, not too far from Parma. And they are one of the few producers left who practice the more uh, ancient tradition of in this first three month cure, the hams are all aged by the breezes that come off the mountains and because they're in the valley. So the hams are strung up by hand on those wood, on those, you know, we see these are all hand tied onto sort of wood slats. And then they're shuttered. What you can't see is there's shutters along the walls and the shutters are opened to allow that airflow that comes off like through the, the, the forest from the mountain. And they believe that that aromatic air, it plays like an important part in the flavor. And I will say, I think Pio Ticini is one of the best ones I've had. So it might have something to do with it. They also just take a ton of care. Um, and anyone who does that usually has a better, better product. So it undergoes this initial aging. And then after three or curing with the, the natural ventilation, and then the, the hams are taken down and then they are uh, the part that's exposed where the skin sort of doesn't touch the way it's, it's um, see if I can find a good picture of it. The way that they sort of traditionally carve them. You can see that what this guy is holding, you see this is the leg. So that's the skin there, that's a bone. It gets removed at the end for a lot of the hands that come here. But then this part here is all like the exposed sort of um, the meat. So unlike the jamón serrano, the prosciutto, they want that tenderness. It's very important to them. So at this point, the exposed meat is covered with a mixture of fat, uh, the fat that it's rendered from the hams itself. And then uh, it's mixed with like salt and pepper. And that's rubbed on that exterior part that's exposed sort of in like a round knob. And uh, that helps seal in the flavor and the moisture. And so then it, um, it would do its final cure. So then at that point, it would be aged the remaining days up to 400, which is what it needs to have a minimum of to bear the label. But some places like Pio Ticini, they, they do a minimum of 500 days. Um, it just depends on the style and the texture. They like a drier uh, texture. They think that it allows for more saturation of flavor and depth of flavor as well. Um, you know, there's sort of this balance. Those are the two major levers that you're, you're pulling. Um, with age, you know, if you age it in the right environment, it won't dry out too much. Uh, and then you'll have this like beautiful, delicate ham with really uh, deep flavors. Or, you know, you can sort of age it less time and it has a more supple texture, but might not have, you know, the, the depth of flavor. It just sort of depends on what the style is you know, different producers have different profiles. And then in addition to um, prosciutto to Parma, there's prosciuttos being made all over Italy. You won't see a lot of them here, but if you ever go there, you might see some of them. But here you'll, all, you'll probably find prosciutto San Daniele, which is another very popular uh, style of prosciutto. It's, uh, I would say more tender, uh, softer than prosciutto de parma in general. Um, but it's also just has a, a different flavor. Again, it's a whole different tradition. That they'll, um, but sim, you know, similar, but there's, there's nuanced differences uh, for the, the true ham connoisseur. And then there's also uh, prosciutto de Toscano, which I love. You can sometimes find that here, but that is a prosciutto that's cured with uh, pepper on the outside. So you kind of get like a little bit of peppercorn flavors notes with it. Uh, it also has some rosemary, some other herbs sort of in that cure. So it just gives it a little bit more of an herbaceousness. Um, but like I said, those can be a little bit more difficult to find. Prosciutto de Parma, you should definitely be able to find 
in most sort of specialty delis or grocers. Um, and it's, you know, because of the name, you know, you're always going to get a certain level of quality. And then if you get really into it, you can kind of learn about some of the other brands and, and seek out those. But in Chicago, I'd say it's, it's a little tricky. I think if you maybe if you go to Italy again, it, because it's Italian, I know Italy mm -hmm. has a couple different producers and I think they carried Pio Ticini at one point too, but they probably will have one of the more high-end producers that does the traditional open air curing. Um, for sure, in, I'd say in Chicago, they would be your best bet if you want a larger variety of Italian prosciuttos and not just prosciutto de Parma. I'm sure they have San Daniele, maybe the Toscano, they might have that one too. Um, haven't been lately, so I don't want to guarantee it, but could always call and ask them sure they'd be happy to tell you what they have mm -hmm. and then and then last we have um sort of american artisans who are now adopting the styles of um both you know the traditional prosciutto the Haman serrano um but we're getting some really we have really good pigs in the states and we have uh again we have our own heritage breeds there is some overlap. We will find Duroc here, which obviously uh, both hands we've talked about have, or both countries we've talked about utilize that breed. And so uh, one of my favorite producers is in the Midwest. And I think they're like the original, like OG sort of American producer seeking out to make not only Italian style prosciutto, but like embracing the same ideas of, um, supporting and sourcing like high quality local uh, heritage breeds of pigs because the raw material is so important in the, the end product. Um, it's a lot of what you taste. And then additionally, again, how they're treated, how they're farmed, happy animals make happy, uh, make for better food. <laughs> and so, um, you know, oh, that was one thing I forgot to say about the Spanish one that I thought was super uh, interesting is that um, the word for slaughter in Spanish is uh, like sacrifisa, which means to sacrifice. So I think like inherently just in the language, it sort of shows a big difference in the philosophy of how they view their food. Like they're treating these animals well because they, they know that ultimately these animals are making a sacrifice to turn to be a delicious food for us. And so I think that's sort of a really interesting distinction. And with these newer producers, I would say they're definitely more of that sort of ideal and philosophy. Um, like La Quercia in Iowa, um, they uh, it's a uh, started by a couple herb and Kathy, they lived in Parma for a couple years um, for other work and just sort of fell in love with the ham and learned all about it and thought, you know, there's so many small, beautiful farms in Iowa, but there's no one making products like this celebrating these animals. So they started, um, they started, I think about almost 20 years ago. So they really have been doing it for a while. Now we have a lot of newer players coming to the field, but they just do such beautiful uh, product. And I think, you know, you can't really go wrong with their stuff. Their main line is called Prosciutto Americano. And it, it again, it's all sustainably and sustainably sourced from humane farms that use heritage breeds. They then also have heritage, named heritage breeds like Berkshire um, and Duroc that are made sort of under separate labels. And last, they started an acorn program they have a farmer who's doing an acorn feeding of the pigs. And so they release that, like the Spanish one sort of uh, usually around the holidays, the acorn edition. And uh, it's a cool thing they do. And if you go to their website, La Quercia, uh, it's L-A-Q-U-E-R-C-I-A. It means the oak uh, and the oak trees uh, are actually where the, the acorns come from that um, like is part of the Dehesa in Spain. Uh, they also dot a lot of the landscape where uh, prosciutto is made in Parma. 
uh, in the Parma area. So there's sort of a long tradition of these raising pigs and, and oak trees. Um, so they're a great producer. And I think you Google them, their website will come up, but they have a great shop and they actually do cuts, cryovact, like little two ounce packs of a variety of their hams. They also make a spec, which is a smoked uh, prosciutto. Delicious. It's a traditionally originates from the Alpine region. So the north of Italy and in like Germany and Austria. Uh, and it's, if you like prosciutto, but want something a little bit more smoky and tense, then I would definitely recommend you guys check out spec. Uh, and they also definitely have that at Italy. I've seen it there. Um, and then a couple other producers domestically, the one I have, um, here is called Lady Edison, and they're from the South. And again, they're using heritage breeds. It, it's not the cheapest, but it is a really delicious ham. It's not nearly as expensive as a Berco though. So um, if you want to treat yourself a little bit, they're another great producer. Um, and then uh, you might also find one called Costello, and that's based out of New York, upstate New York. And it's another one where the, the type the breed of the pig per leg changes because they buy from different farmers. But if the staff save the label, they should know, but it's all heritage breeds that they use. And um, it's a really nice sort of center cut, um, really sweet, tender prosciutto. I would say the American high quality ones in general tend to have a nice sweetness to them. The La Quercia I think is really refined and balanced and, um, especially because they have a range of profiles. They have the basic, then they have the different breeds, which I think the heritage breed ones are a little sweeter. Um, and then they have the smoked, um, the, the smoked spec style prosciutto. And then additionally, they make a spicy prosciutto that has a like a uh, spice rub on the outside. And that's kind of fun too. So a lot of fun options for your holiday entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It all sounds delish too. Yeah, so. any questions? Anyone? I definitely want to go out and look for some more of these. Definitely excited to, to actually find some of the domestic yeah. um, products. So I want to- La Quercia, if not, I mean, it's best if you can get it sliced off the ham, but because they make the retail packs now, you can find those a lot of places. Maybe not like, I, I, Mariana's might have it. I'm not sure, but I, I think Whole Foods probably has it. And then um, some of the specialty shops that I mentioned before will probably mm -hmm. have it for slicing. So it's, it's if you haven't ever had La Quercia, I think it's hard to go wrong. And Yeah, I definitely wanna try that. So I just love, I, I like the story of them. So I have to see what they're producing. They're also the nicest people, um, and it's it's cool because they're they're in Norwalk, Iowa, so they're not too far. They're just right outside of Des Moines. Oh, Chris is saying Fresh Farms has it prepackaged. There you go. Yeah, I was gonna say I, actually Fresh Farms. Fresh Farms, awesome. They're, they probably, I would say they definitely would have a Hamon Serrano. They might mm -hmm. get an Americo for the holidays, but I know for the, the basic ones, they'll definitely have those there. Um, but yeah, but La Quercia, I think you can definitely find it. And like you said, you can even buy it direct from them, which maybe this year isn't a bad idea. It kind of helps yeah. them out. And I know they do deals with shipping if you buy over a certain amount. And mm -hmm. they're someone that I know on their website, you can buy whole pieces if you want to. Um, so that's who I would tell you to buy a whole ham from. The other thing about their hams that would serve you better if you are trying to mess with your own is that the prosciutto americano, essentially it's the center cut. So there's no skin on it and there's no like the, the normal legs are quite big. So even if you had a little slicer, you it's still way too big but they sort of tie theirs. And so it's a smaller, more manageable piece mm -hmm. and it's all usable. So you don't have to trim any of it. Oh, that's nice. So, and it's cryovac. And because of that, it's a little bit smaller. So it's usually like a nine, nine, 10 pound piece, which as far as prosciuttos go is on the small side. So 
that would definitely be my recommendation. But they also make uh, salamis and uh, pancetta, you know, other different charcuterie items as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lydia. Did anyone have any other questions? I know we had some during the talk on where to get things and stuff, but now we definitely have a good list of things to have for our charcuteries during the holidays. So thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you so much, Lydia. We're excited to see you again in the future. I think your next talk is gonna be on honey and cheese and that yeah. shall be exciting. So, uh, and tomorrow we will be discussing the wines of Spain with Mary Ross. Hmm. So those of you who are able to join us, I hope to see you again at 4.30 tomorrow. So wine, wine to go with the ham. I yeah. was just going to say, yeah, you'll learn about wines to pair with your hamon. So yeah, yeah now you got to get some hamon and Mary's going to tell you exactly what to drink with it. So That's I'm expecting good. someone to ask a question yeah. for about <laughs> that tomorrow. So, all right, everyone, thank Bye. you so much and have a great evening. Bye, Bye everyone.